I have been leaked some documentation that has gone out to Ford agents across the UK, which has basically just changed the game when it comes to this engine and what support is now being offered if you've suffered from the one litre Ford EcoBoost problem. And also some other developments on some other Ford engines, which I've also mentioned in this documentation. I'm going to go through it in this video. Do not miss it. It is absolutely crucial if you've been affected by Ford or if you own a Ford EcoBoost engine. So make sure you check out this full video. Okay, so what has been happening around the Ford EcoBoost and the latest developments? Well, first of all, we're going to go back to January of this year. I actually did a couple of videos on the Ford EcoBoost, which you can see here in the link description, so you can get a timeline of events. Now, basically, the story sort of broke in January of this year, 2024, actually in the United States. Now, the background to this, the Ford 1.0-litre EcoBoost engine has been around for over 10 years. I think 2012, roughly, it came out. And basically, it's a little 1.0-litre engine, three-cylinder, and it runs what we call a wet belt system. So, effectively, it has a cam belt. But rather than being on the outside of the engine, usually when you open a bonnet on a car, look down on the left-hand side, your cam belt's usually on the left. There is some exceptions, but usually on the left-hand side. Ford decided to bury this cam belt uh, in oil in deep into the engine. And what basically happens is, is they deteriorate very quickly. Oil and rubber are not the best of the materials to mix together. That breaks up the belt. The belt gets into the engine, into the sump, gets into the oil pickup, blocks all the oil ways, and it can blow the engine up, or in some cases actually stop the braking system from working and cause a accident. And this has been going on for many, many years. It's been well known, it's been well documented not just by myself, I've mentioned on the channel, but also by lots of the media outlets, that there is a problem with the Ford EcoBoost engine. Now, why this was relevant in January of this year was because in the United States, Ford in the US decided to recall all the Ford 1.0-litre EcoBoost engines. I think it was about 150, 200,000, exactly roughly around there, of these vehicles affected and basically change the uh, belts on them. The reason being for that was because they'd had a couple of uh, lawsuits against them, a class action was forming, where basically some people have been injured. The car basically lost braking, and the reason it would lose braking is because, as I mentioned, as this belt sort of degrades and all the bits of rubber falls into the engine, sump, it gets into the oil, and without boring you, the vacuum pump, which is part of the braking system, is driven off the side of the engine. It is also submerged and runs off oil, uh, and that debris gets into that pump, knackers it, you lose your sort of boost or assistance of the servo, and that can effectively mean you have lose all braking system or have restricted braking system. And in this case, in the US, it caused some accidents and people, like I said, were suing. The regulator in the US got involved. They had a joint investigation with Ford and they concluded that there was an issue and that basically they were affecting vehicles where the one litre EcoBoost engine was fitted to automatic gearboxes, a particular automatic box, which I'll put you the code here. The reason that auto box was relevant to the story was because they were suggesting that the auto box, the vi extra vibrations caused by this particular auto box, this would advance the degradement of the belt, actually cause it to fail, and that could cause obviously complete engine failure, or in this case, like I said, uh, a brake loss as well. Now I mentioned this story in my first video, and it was really just sort of talking about how the fact it was really one of the first times that Ford had ever mentioned that there was really an issue with their EcoBoost engine. In the past, they've been very sort of protective about it, as you can imagine. There had been many stories broke about it, but Ford were always very confident in their engine and always started defending it. And like I said, it was just ironic at the time, that's why I made the video, that this is the first time they'd actually mentioned there was faults with the wet belt system, which they had developed. Now, from the back of that video I made in early uh, January, I was actually approached by the BBC, who actually wanted to speak to me and talk about the problem because they've been having lots of complaints about the Ford EcoBoost wet belt system, braking issues for a number of years, and they were decided that it was about time that they did something about it, and they made a documentary, a small documentary, that went on to uh, the BBC uh, Watchdog show, or part of uh, the One show. Now that aired a few months ago and Ford basically come out with a response saying that they were happy to deal with claims if they ever needed to and they were aware of some issues but pretty much they were being pretty defensive even then. And it'd be fair to say that a lot of people have contacted me, and that's an understatement, with massive concerns. They've been affected directly with engine failure, financial burden because of it, they're unable to get any money back from Ford or any help from Ford. It has not been great from Ford, to be honest with you. They have really, really have let down a lot of customers, in my view. However, they have moved the goalposts today, and in fact, they are now 
starting to look like they're going to do something, although it's not quite what we were looking for, but it definitely is movement. So let me go through this document that has been basically sent to me. Now it's a document that's been sent out to all four dealerships in the UK to dealer principals, and it's basically to deal with some points of clarity and also to update them about what the Ford are gonna do if they come across customers with this wet belt failure. And also mention another engine as well, which we'll briefly talk about in a minute. So I have got a picture now of the document. I'll try my best to put a link in the description of where you can see it. Now I have been sent this as a picture, but I'll try my best to put it up there. And obviously you can see a picture of this now, but I'm gonna quickly read through this and explain to you so the main points about it and what my views are on it as well and, and how it will affect customers going forward. So the document, which is dated the 3rd of June, 2024, key message on it is the EcoBoost Wet Belt Goodwill Support Scheme. Now this reads as follows. You will be aware of the growth of social media and press coverage of the EcoBoost vehicles in the UK. The purpose of this letter is to communicate the ongoing support we will offer to EcoBoost classic engines pre-2019. Now I'll come back to 2019 in a minute because there was a fundamental change there, although it doesn't mean that after 2019 you will not, you will can't experience problems with the Ford wet belt system. I'll explain more in a moment. Now Ford is confident of the robustness and reliability of its EcoBoost engine. Oh, well, it makes me laugh when the stated guidelines for maintenance and service are followed. Ford will support customers with wet belt issues on the EcoBoost Fox Classic engine pre-2019, where the customers have had full service history for vehicles up to 10 years old with less than 150,000 miles. Ford is expanding the age criteria to support those vehicles from seven years to 10 years. So there's definitely been some movement there, but it's not just the age of the vehicle that's moved, it's also the criteria for goodwill has moved as well, as we'll come back to in a moment. Now it then goes on to mention some points of clarity. This is probably because a lot of people have maybe seen my video or other sort of videos as well, maybe out there on the social media or in the, on Google, basically talking about the recall in the US and why it's not being dealt with here in the UK. Now Ford were asked this question by the BBC and they didn't give really any answer of why Ford cars were being recalled, the EcoBoost in the US, but not in the UK. Now I have given an answer here and we'll go through it. Now it says there have been online comments and confusion about the EcoBoost recall in North America. To clarify, the recall announced in North America in early 2024 relates to vehicles powered by the one litre EcoBoost engine, the same engine, produced with an automatic transmission. And by the way, that is a automatic box that is also in vehicles in the UK and Europe. You can find many of them. However, it says this, the recall doesn't apply to European vehicles because they are not the same. The key hardware differences between the regions have led to a unique issue in North America, but not in Europe. Quick feedback on that. As I mentioned, the same engines are produced all in the same factory. And yes, there is a definitely a issue with the automatic transmission that was used in the cars in America. Bear in mind that the cars in America are predominantly auto. They didn't really use stick shift or manuals on the one liter EcoBoost in America, so they're all autos. But it definitely is contributing towards the belt failing quicker. I will not argue with that. There is an explanation in the documents explaining about why that is the case. And basically, without boring you, it's to do with sort of extra vibration caused by the auto box or the torque converter. And that's what's causing the further deterioration. And the only reason the recall is being made in the US is down to safety issues. It isn't to do with the fact that safety regulators bothered about the belts degrading to the fact, you know, of the quality of the engine. They're only bothered about the safety element of it, which you can understand. That's their job. Now, Ford are basically saying that the issue doesn't arise with vehicles in Europe and the UK. However, that doesn't sit true with what I've been experiencing and what people have been contacting me about. I have had countless, if not probably hundreds of emails from people who have been let down by the Ford EcoBoost engine, including people with manual and automatic transmissions suffering exactly the same problem as affected with cars in the US, i.e. they have lost complete braking systems. And this is including vehicles past 2019. So these are newer vehicles as well. And the reason why that's important, when it keeps mentioned in 2019 in this document, is after 2019, they changed the wet belt to a chain. However, that is the main drive belt. So the main cam belt that actually drives the camshafts and the crankshaft was made of rubber. Now they've changed it to a chain, but they didn't change the oil pump belt. That was still made of rubber. It is still a wet belt and it still basically falls to pieces and can still block up engines. There are still people with 2020, 21, 22 vehicles who are having the same issues whereby the belt is degrading the oil pump wet belt and it's clogging up the engine. So yes, they've solved part of the problem, but for whatever reason, they didn't change the oil pump belt 
on the pre on the post 2019 vehicles so they've only eradicated a small part of the problem and like i said on pre 2019 both the belts the oil pump and the main cam belt wet belt are rubber based and the complaints about it are huge. I mean, literally, there is an entire Facebook group of people who have got complaints about Ford and the EcoBoost engine. Loss of braking, cam belt failure, it is just horrific. And unfortunately, this failure is happening every single day. And also, it is really important to mention that the amount of vehicles fitted with this 1.0-litre EcoBoost engine in Europe and UK dwarfs the amount that has been sold in the US. So to recall all those cars in the US, although it will be in a financial burden to Ford in the US, it's not the end of the world. To do that in the UK and Europe is going to cost huge amounts of money and also a lot of damage, commercial damage to the engine and brand itself. So always bear that in mind that it is definitely in Ford's interest and really convenient that they can actually point out that there is some sort of difference as to why this fault on this particular engine and this particular box in the US is not the same as in Europe. That is definitely in Ford's interest to make sure that they have a solid defense there because otherwise, if they just admit and say, yeah, it's the same problem, they're gonna have to recall all these cars. Now, moving on, the second point they're going to talk about is actually going off subject slightly. It's to do with another engine, although we will get back to the Ford EcoBoost in a second and going through what the new terms are about how you can get uh, the engines fixed if you've suffered uh, cam belt failure or anything else related to the wet belt problem. But number two of this form is talking about the actual Ford Transit. So we're moving on now. The Ford Transit wet belt service schedule. Now, the Ford Transit wet belt service schedule has been changed from 10 years or 150,000 miles to 6 years and 100,000 miles. The Transit 2.0-litre EcoBoost diesel engine is not an engineered in the same way as the 1.0-litre EcoBoost for the classic engine. The Transit service intervals for timing belt, tensioner and idlers has been reduced to 6 years, like I said, from the standard 10 years when it was first made. And this has been done to order to address the issues with the timing belt service life caused by engine oil dilution and the vehicle operation conditions and usage. Basically, the Ford Transit 2 litre diesel engine suffers with a very similar problem, mainly because it runs also a wet belt. The reality is these wet belts are useless, rubbish, they should not be fitted on any cars. The Ford Transit diesel is another engine that's got fitted with a wet belt. It goes wrong, it fails, and now Ford now are saying the best way to deal with this is to effectively change the schedule of when you need to change the belt. Now, don't go on the mileage, I'll go on the year basage. So, as I say now, instead of 10 years, it's now 6 years, 150,000 down to 100,000 miles. The reality is, if you've got a vehicle that's 7 years old and it's done 58,000 miles, it doesn't matter if it still goes or you have a belt failure. It's the age that matters, and basically that's the key thing here. Coming down from 150,000 to 100,000 is here to there. But going from 10 years to 6 years is definitely a major change because what's probably happened is they're looking at the figures of when these belts are failing and they're trying to get the average age and they've probably decided the sweet spot is 6 years. If you change the belt or the belts were changed at 6 years, a lot of these faults probably would have been prevented. Now vehicle manufacturers don't like having short service intervals. It's not great for the look of the brand. They want to be able to promote the fact that their engines don't need servicing uh, as often. So I it saves you the customer money and that is something that they promote when selling vehicles. So it is a big step for them to turn around and say that these wet belts, cam belts now must be changed at 6 years rather than 10 years and it definitely will help in preventing some of those failures if that is carried out by the owners of these vehicles. Now in the document it's not mentioned anything about goodwill or talking about you know, how they're going to fix them, they're just simply adjusting those vehicle schedules down and that is a cru and that is crucial to remember if you've got a Ford Transit 2 litre diesel it's now crucial to remember you must be changing that wet belt before really 6 years of age. Yes it's an added expense but trust me if it goes wrong it will cost you a fortune to sort out so it's really crucial that you make sure you do that so make sure you take note of that new servicing schedule for the 2 litre diesel. Now lastly moving on the big news so the next steps on this document reads EcoBoost Ford Classic pre-2019 manufactured customer support. Going forward Ford will provide goodwill support to customers with the EcoBoost Ford Classic pre-2019 engine up to 10 years old with full service history and less than 150,000 miles provided below requirements are met. Now these requirements have been reined in a little bit so actually they're a lot more lenient than they were just a few days ago. The main ones are the vehicle engine concern only relating to wet time belt issues. So basically if you've lost braking loss and you've had the wet belts degraded and caused that braking loss to fail that is a wet belt timing issue in my view and certainly what seems to be suggested here. Also 
any sort of failure of the belt itself, so it's either it's degrading far prematurely or anything like that, or it's causing the oil light to come on or oil problems, or it's effectively blown the engine up, that is a wet belt timing issue. Vehicle case is up to 10 years old with full service history and less than 150,000 miles driven. Full service history documentation in accordance with the vehicle service portfolio, which can either be from the Ford authorised repairer, a mix of Ford and independent garages, or from solely independent garages. So now basically, as long as you've got full service history, they will carry out goodwill. That certainly wasn't the case before, and they did used to scrutinise really heavily about the service history, about what garages were doing it, and pinpointing down exactly what they were using. However, the service history documents, it says here, can be plus or minus three months from the due date. So if you've got a service and you're a month over, they're not going to penalise you for being slightly over, as long as it doesn't go past three months from its service. So as long as you've had the service history done, they will be fixing these vehicles, as long as you can prove it. Vehicles with full service history but missing a service in 2020 during the pandemic will be included. So obviously there, there's obviously a rare exception for 2020. You do not need to provide history of lubricants used in the vehicle service. So i.e. they're not trying to pinpoint down the exact oil being used. You do have to use a specialist oil in the Ford EcoBoost. It's called 5W20 Eco Oil. And basically what Ford were trying to do, some would say that maybe they were doing it to get out of it. I'm not saying that, but others may have said that that they were trying to pinpoint the exact oil I was on the form, on the documentation, proving that you'd use the right oil to basically sort of make sure that you were using the correct oil because if you use the wrong oil, it will cause the belt to degrade further. Now, basically, they say you don't need any of that. As long as you can just prove it's been serviced, they're happy to accept it. Now, this is the crucial thing. Where all the above criteria have been met, the CRC, which is basically Ford's main budget, will support 100% of the repair costs. So basically what they're saying now is if the wet belt failure has happened within 10 years, under 150,000 miles, and you can prove the service history, that is all you need to get a new engine or a repair. Now in most cases, if the belt has failed completely and the engine is destroyed, they're not going to repair it. They're probably going to replace the engine. If the belt is caused debris and it's just got into the sump, there may be a case where they just might be able to change the belt and, and maybe clean out the strainer, etc. That could be possible. But either way, they are going to give 100% support to people who have got that service history. And like I said, they've extended it up to 10 years of age, which is brilliant for those customers who are slightly over that band. Most of these failures as well are seen to be happening as well, predominantly more on the older vehicles. So that is really good news to see that that benefit has been upgraded to 10 years. Now it goes on to say, and some also some crucial information here as well. Please note that dealers should not use their own goodwill budget. Basically, the local dealers have their own goodwill scheme. All claims to be handled by the CRC team through the central CLP budget. Basically, what you're saying is, is that dealers now don't have to use their own budgets. They can effectively go to Ford and get paid out from this scheme. 100% they'll solve that problem for you, as long as you've met those criteria. Now, this is great news if you've just suffered a wet belt failure on your one litre EcoBoost engine here in the UK. However, what happens if you've already had a, a failure and you've been refused goodwill from Ford in the past? Well, actually, there is a reference in this document as well at the bottom. Let me just read you what it says. It is only brief, but it does say that customers who have previously contacted CRC, which is Ford, and had support refused, customers can rearrange with the CRC, again Ford, to have their case effectively reviewed. The customer must still be registered keeper of the vehicle. So in reality, you've got nothing to lose, even if you've previously had an issue with Ford in contacting them and you were basically refused under the scheme. So if you made a claim to Ford for your dealer and it was the vehicle was knocked back on the case that it was, it was too old, get back in touch with Ford, particularly if at the time of the claim, the vehicle was under 10 years old and under 150,000 miles. If they refuse your claim because one of your services was slightly over the date, remember it must be plus or minus three months, but get back in touch with Ford. If it was a case where you had a service missing during the pandemic, get back in touch with Ford. If you had an issue whereby Ford was saying they couldn't prove the exact oil grade was used in your vehicle, you didn't have that proof from servicing, get back in touch with Ford. They are going to stick to their guns in regards to the service history. If you've been missing services all over the place, they are going to knock you back. You do need to be getting full service history. If there has been a problem in the past, get hold of the service history. Go back to the garages, find copies of it. Most garages keep documentation like that for a number of years. You might be able to find those documentation to prove that the schedules have been met. Now, this news is really positive from Ford. However, please note, this is not a recall. Do not be ringing Ford up saying, now you're going to have to change my wet belt system. They are not going to do that. This is basically saying that if you suffer failure and you've had full history, you've done everything you should be doing, and it falls under that 150,000 miles, 10 years, they're now going to pay 100% 
of those costings under the goodwill scheme. Or if you put a claim in, 800% can be obtained. That's what is basically changed. Although I will say, lastly, on that 2019 backwards point, this is only for the EcoBoost engines pre-2019, called the Classic or the Fox engine, but it's not making any reference about goodwill on those later engines. So it's 2019 onwards, nothing has effectively really changed for you. If you've got problems, you should still be going back to Ford anyway. They do still have goodwill schemes, but obviously they're only contributing so much towards it, and the cost involved can be astronomical. You might get 60-70% discount, like some people were getting offered in the past, I've been speaking to, have been emailing me, but when the engines are you know, thousands and thousands of pounds, people were still getting, even with the maximum discount under the goodwill previously, they were still having to pay you know, two, three, four thousand pounds in order to get the car fixed, and it just wasn't financially viable for them. Also, from a dealer's perspective as well, if we're going to start buying these cars and they've got full history and you sell them to a customer, if something goes wrong, from a dealer's perspective, a used car dealer's perspective, now we can then turn around and say, well, actually, this should be fixed by Ford. It can be fixed under goodwill. So there is some confidence being brought back to dealers as well. But the main point being that customers need to be looked after. And at least Ford now looks like they are starting to make some effort into rectifying the issues with these older pre-2019 Ford EcoBoost 1 litre engines. Now, I know this is a lot of information to take in. But just to clarify lastly on the 1 litre EcoBoost to make sure we're all in the same boat. If you're under 10 years of age, if you're under 150,000 miles, if your wet belt has failed and you've got full history, you can prove it, plus or minus three months, doesn't matter where it was serviced, you can now go back to Ford and put a claim in and you should be getting 100% of those costs repaired. At least what this letter to dealers is suggesting. And also, like I said, if you've had a previous problem with Ford and they've knocked you back, uh, basically refused, like I said, the conditions mentioned before, some examples I gave, get in touch with them. And if you do get in touch with them and you have a positive response or a negative response, I would love to hear it. We need to make sure Ford are held to the fire on this, make sure that this is being done properly, that they are fixing these vehicles. I'm sure they're doing this for their own brand image as well. It's probably affecting them quite badly. So I'm sure if they have gone down this route, that they actually are going to start actively looking to fix this problem and sort of drawn a line underneath it. Hopefully that is the case. So if you've had an experience with Ford going forward because of this uh, video and this announcement, let me know. My email is in the link description. I'd love to hear it, positive or negative, and I will come back in a future video and give some updates on that. And hopefully Ford are doing the right thing and we can actually say something really decent about the Ford EcoBoost and that Ford are looking after its customers, which ultimately what all manufacturers should be trying to do. So there we go, guys. Thank you for watching this video. I was supposed to be putting out another video tonight, an auction video, but obviously I had to sort of bring this forward. Uh, so uh, I'm going to put that out hopefully in the next few days so make sure you don't miss that one if you're new to the channel please like and subscribe I don't just talk about uh, engines I also talk about my goings on in the most trade as a used car dealer dealing in cars sort of sub £5,000 so make sure you join the Car UK channel whether that's going on auction visits and buying cars talking about different vehicles I've got lots of content to give you and I would love you to be a part of the Car UK network so please like and subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one